We're here today with Stephanie Roach, um, player for P Mount and the Ireland women's national team. Steph, I don't think you need too much of an introduction, really. Um, quite a well-known player in the league, but I suppose we'll just get into it. Um, how have you found the season so far with P Mount? Our team spirits high. How's it going? Yeah, it's look, it's been a great start for us. Obviously, nine points from nine is exactly what we wanted at the start of the season. Um, we had two tough games, Wexford first away, difficult team to play, you know, they, they kind of limit your chances and we were, we done well to kind of come away from that game with the three points and then to go into the international break and obviously we had the bye week as well. So we had a big break between the game against Shells as well. So it was almost like starting again. And then we obviously came up against Shells who are one of the better teams in the league. So it's been a tough start. So I think going into the Bowes game at the weekend, it was it was all about really just making sure we take nothing for granted and, and get the three points. And thankfully we managed to do that. Yeah, and... I think this season it really seems like the league is a bit more open, a bit more competitive. You don't really know what's coming or who's going to win games. So to get that bright start, especially with those couple of huge wins against Wexford and Shells, is really positive for P-Mount. Yeah, definitely. And as you say, I think I've said it several times in different podcasts I've done that the league is definitely getting more competitive. I think every team has stepped it up this year. You know, I think I kind of, at the start, I kind of foreseen, didn't see many kind of, big big wins or big defeats obviously we kind of ruined that from weekend with their win but uh, I think overall this this year is going to be definitely a more competitive league and as I said it's kind of every team and every game you go into you can take nothing for granted because it's always going to be a test which is which can only be good for the league especially with the streaming and more people kind of watching the league and, and it having a bit more of a media focus it's it's definitely kind of it, it helps I think progress the league and helps promote the league a bit better when you've got more competitive games every week. Yeah, definitely. And what are your personal goals for this season? Are you hoping to maybe compete for the Golden Boot? <laughs> yeah, look, I haven't got off to a great start. That way I haven't scored yet. <laughs> I actually don't think we've had a shot, if I'm totally honest. <laughs> but, uh, look, that's what I said. The, the games I've played, and obviously I didn't play against Bowes, and James decided to uh, rotate the squad. We've got a very big big squad and good quality players. And in fairness, a few of the girls deserve to get some minutes. So obviously I have to be patient. And then hopefully next week I'll be able to get off the mark. But yeah, definitely, I think... When I was in the league a couple of years ago, I think I won the Golden Boot twice. And I think I came second behind Sarah Lauder the other year I played in the league. So obviously that's kind of something that I'd like to get back to. Um, I think my game has definitely changed a little bit over the years in terms of when I was away, I played different positions where I probably wasn't scoring so many goals. So I kind of want to convince or prove to myself even more than anything that I haven't lost that goal scoring touch. And as I said, hopefully the goals will start flowing in the next few games. Yeah, and as you said there as well, p has such kind of depth in the squad, a lot of young players coming through and things like that. Has there been anyone on the team who you've just kind of loved watch grow and you're happy to see them kind of thrive now in the squad? Yeah, definitely. I think we're lucky because it's funny, at the start of the season, I, I have my own podcast as well and we were chatting about how little movement we had kind of within the transfer window as such. Like we didn't really have any players coming in apart from two young players coming up from the 19s. And I spoke highly about Dora Gorman and Tegan Ruddy coming back and they both had a, a first start of the season against Bowes too. But I think obviously just the likes of Becky and Doherty, but I feel like they've almost became senior players because they were there all last year. You know, that kind of way. So I'm kind of used to them and they're really starting to develop develop their game and grow but I think definitely Chloe Smullen and, and in particular Leora Fitzpatrick I think they both really really good players both left footed like myself so when they're on the left hand side I tend to link up really well with them in training as well so really looking forward to uh, to seeing how they develop obviously Orla got on at the weekend and got her debut and let's hope Chloe can get that as well soon but they're two really talented players and I think they're not only kind of they don't just work hard but they have the ability to you know they're both good on the ball both aggressive, both know how to play the game. I think maybe their positional sense needs to get better at times, but that will that will come obviously more game times and stuff like that. So yeah, they're two players who I think are huge talents for for the league to come forward. And as I said, to be playing a team like Pmount and and seeing the players they have ahead of them, I think that can only help them as well. Yeah, one hundred percent. And looking at other teams in the league, if you could sign one player for Pmount, who would it be and why? Oh gosh, um, <laughs> I don't want to sound like I'm being arrogant here, but I think if I'm totally honest, th there's nobody I'd like to replace in their team. So I feel like if I picked a player, it would mean that they'd have to come in and play ahead of players that we have there. And I think not many players would do that in the league. Mm. Um, I think of players who have stood out to me, this the obvious one is Ellen Malloy. I think Ellen's a fantastic player, really, really good player good on the ball, can dribble, can score goals. Obviously, she's proven that as well this season so far already. 
Um, and Ava Mahoney, I think, is a good player too. I think I've I've had kind of been around both of them within the Irish home, home base sessions as well. So you kind of get to see them, their individuality a little bit more when you're kind of up close and personal with them. But they're two excellent players who I'm sure any team in the league would have. But as I said, I feel like if I picked them, I'd have to replace one of the girls that are already there. And said, the competition in their squad as it is is huge. So um, yeah, they'd be the two if I, if I had to pick, I'd say those two. And within the, within the national squad, is there... If you had to pick one person again to bring back to the Women's National League, who would it be? Jesus. Uh, <laughs> so many. It's, it's brilliant to see because I, obviously watching the previous games and to hear the commentators talk about the players that have played in the Women's National League and have now gone away and t- to do so well. Obviously, the likes of Leanne Cairn and Amber Barrett was at females as well. And Katie McCabe, Denise O'Sullivan. There's, there's so many players who you could mm. pick. Um, again, I'll probably be selfish and maybe say Nia Farley because she was so good for us last season. Um, I think... I honestly thought she'd be a huge loss to us and she has been but thankfully we have got good players who have been able to step in but I think Neve and Claire last year had an unbelievable partnership at the back for us and yeah it would be selfish and maybe say get Neve back. <laughs> yeah I think that's fair enough um, and last question you've had such an amazing career with a lot of highs between actually playing football and you know commentary punditry all that kind of stuff but if you could pick one favourite moment from your career what would it be? Jesus. Um, yeah, obviously you said there's a lot of highs. There's also been a lot of lows, if I'm honest, probably more lows than highs. <laughs> um, but obviously the postcast jumps out. I think most people would expect me to say that, but it was a huge part of my career and, and a great moment for like myself, obviously, to be able to to be up there with some of the best players in the world was a was a great experience. But I think I'd have to say my home debut for Ireland. Uh, we were playing against Kazakhstan and it was one off and Noel King put me on in like the 82nd minute. And I scored in the 83rd, I think. And my family were in the crowd. My grandmother was there as well. And yeah, that was just a, a great moment. Just it was probably at the time a huge win for us to kind of keep us going in that campaign. And obviously in the end it didn't work out. We didn't qualify. So at the time, it was just an amazing experience to be able to think that I helped us along the way to maybe qualify. And obviously it didn't work out that way in the end. But uh, yeah, that would probably be my my biggest and it was my home debut as well to, to play for and was huge and to be able to score and help the team was great yeah such pride in a moment like that it's really amazing um but thanks so much uh for coming on and chatting just letting people get to know you a little bit better and yeah best of luck with the with the rest of the league and the match this weekend as well that's great thanks very much and best podcast <laughs>